don't smoke no damn crack. Oh, well, according to movies, black people smoke crack. Yeah. Uh-huh. No? Look here. White lady, you need to get the hell out of my house right now. Uh-uh. Or I kick your ass. Oh, okay. I'll go. Um, well, I'll see if we have weed. Let's get going. Um, Wheezy? Uh-huh. What? I love sharing. I love soul food. Hell no. That's the most beautiful thing anybody ever said. Oh, yeah, hug me, you big chocolate monster. Oh, uh, look. You smell like mayonnaise. You need to go take a shower. You already breaking my skin out on my face, and I can't take it. Get get out of my house. I, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll go. I'm a shower on you. Smell kind of good. Ain't nothing like white butt crack farting in the wind. Mm -mm -mm. So we're discussing the importance of controlling your narrative. See, when you allow other people to control your narrative, essentially they'll have you sounding exactly like that ridiculous video that I just played, which was intentionally done just to show you the extremes of how ridiculous someone can have you sounding or looking when you give them the power to control your narrative. You see, the narrative is very important because for thousands of years it's the way we pass culture down from ancestor to descendant. And it's how we know who we are. It's how we can explain ourselves to people and show exactly where we stand and explain exactly why we fight. Now, when you sit back and you just allow other people to control your narrative, in a hundred years, they'll have Martin Luther King. His story will be told, uh, or he'll be being played by Miley Cyrus. Could you believe that? Can you actually picture that happening? Huh? Yeah, you can. Huh? Are you serious? So the thing is, we have to get proactive about our narrative, especially black men. I see a lot of things happening out there in the media speaking about black men. People come from other countries and then they come to America and they have a preconceived notion about how black men are. Then there was a narrative that black women are overly sexualized. Really? Is that true? Let me tell you something. My grandmother was a black woman. She passed away. But let me tell you something. That woman, that woman, that woman was so covered up in with her dressing, she didn't have anything hanging out. That dog out. I, I thought it was a ball of laundry in there making those pancakes. But the thing is, when we sit back and we allow the people that have the loudest microphone to define us, guess what? Essentially, we get what we get. So how do we combat that? Everyone has to get loud. Everyone has to get pissed off at the same time. When they are being portrayed a certain way. When other people are controlling the narrative. So, what are you going to do about it? Enough is enough! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking planet! Hey, God, don't man, listen, that's not what I said. Give me my narrative back, you thing. And the thing is, when you get out there, you stand on it. You stand on it. You tell people, listen, this is the narrative. This is the historical narrative. This guy didn't build the pyramid. This guy did. This guy was not a pharaoh. That's not how the Egyptians and Kemet and all of that look. Uh, this is how they look. And if you have a problem with the historical, actual, accurate, historical record, guess what you could do? Peace.